This device is called O-Chain. And before we talk about what it actually does, we need to understand some basic principles behind pedal kickback. If you've ever wondered why you need to add those extra links when sizing a chain on your full suspension bike, it's because virtually all bikes have some amount of chain growth as it progresses through its travel. Now the amount of chain growth varies depending on the suspension design, but most designers dial in a little bit of growth because it prevents your bike from squatting when you have that chain engaged when you're pedaling. We all want our bikes to pedal well, right? But too much anti-squat will prevent your suspension from doing its job and you may feel a tugging sensation from the pedals as your suspension compresses. So O-Chain is designed to help in these situations, right? Well, that's where you'd be wrong. You see, pedal kickback is also an issue when you're descending as well. It's not uncommon to feel a sharp tug from the pedals when you're hitting some rowdy descents. But here's where it gets really complicated. How much of that pedal kickback you actually feel is dependent on many factors, including the suspension design, the speed you're traveling, even the gear you're in has a factor. That's because when you're coasting on those descents, your free hub is constantly spinning, so the wheel impact has to be fast enough to engage the free hub before it could actually pull on the chain. Therefore, the general idea is that pedal kickback is more of an issue on slower, deep compression type riding rather than something smooth and fast. O-Chain is an active spider that's designed to dampen the effects of pedal kickback by absorbing a portion of that chain tug only when you're descending. It does this by providing a spring-loaded backwards rotation, which is adjustable anywhere from 6 to 12 degrees, depending on which set of these small elastomers you have inside. So in theory, O-Chain should allow your suspension to move more freely and be more active at all times. The Italian company claims this is a game-changing device and gives you the sensation of riding your bike without a chain. Those are some pretty bold claims and we're going to find out if the product actually works. O-Chain itself weighs about 127 grams and mounts like any other chain ring, so it's compatible with E13, Shimano, and SRAM direct mount standards with a common 104 BCD chain ring. Now as I mentioned earlier, O-Chain is designed solely to isolate pedal kickback during descending only. So there's really no benefit at all when it comes to climbing. And let's just get one of the biggest downsides out of the way, which is that O-Chain adds some dead space to your pedal engagement. How much depends on which elastomers you actually have installed. The unit I tested came shipped with the six degree elastomers. So coupled with the four degrees of engagement from my i9 hubs, put me right around 10 degrees total, which was definitely noticeable, but I quickly adapted to. I'm not super picky when it comes to fast engagement. However, many people are, and the added float is definitely gonna be a buzzkill for a lot of people. Other than that, there's very little indication of anything else different going on while you're pedaling. The unit is silent, and the feeling of bumping up against those elastomers is really a non-issue. The o is not designed to do anything when you're climbing, but when I get off the pedals and then spin again, there's a little bit of a damp feel as you bump up against the elastomers. Nothing too distracting at all. I tested the device on two separate bikes, a short and long travel 29er for several months. After many back-to-back -back sessions on trails I'm familiar with, I can safely say that O-Chain does work as advertised. The best way I can describe the difference is there's a general feeling of isolation from your feet and it noticeably takes the edge off sharp hits, especially on those low speed technical descents. On the Mega Tower specifically, which isn't known to have the most sensitive feeling suspension, the O-Chain made a marked improvement in small bump sensitivity in many of the trails I'm familiar with. The back end felt like it wasn't getting caught up as much and the suspension overall felt more oh, compliant. Yeah. Definitely feels more sensitive, I can tell. I'm a little surprised I can notice the difference off the bat. Now whether this feeling is coming from the suspension working better or from that isolation layer from the chain is really unclear. But what is clear is that you can see the unit moving occasionally in the video. And to be honest, I was surprised at the results and to make sure I wasn't crazy, I did some blind back-to-back -back testing with my buddy Dan down a flight of stairs, which turned out to be a really good control testing environment because it provides consistent repetitive hits. And then you're going to do two runs down here without yep. looking at the chain ring. Okay. You write it down. You tell me if it feels better, worse, or the same. Okay. Better, worse, or the same? I would say worse. Worse, huh? I would say worse. It, was, it wasn't as plush as uh -huh. earlier. Yeah. Um, and it was definitely noisier. Noisier? Those are three things I noticed. Interesting. Like more chain slap? Yeah. Do you, think, do you think the noise may influence your feeling of suppleness 
Possibly, yes. So the question remains, is O-Chain as game-changing as the company claims? For me, I would have to say no, but it could be for you. As I mentioned earlier, the amount of pedal kickback is dependent on many factors, including your bike design, along with where and how you ride. In a nutshell, your mileage will definitely vary. And then you need to consider the drawbacks, which are the added weight, complexity, and of course the elephant in the room, that dead space while you're pedaling. I tried the 9 and 12 degree elastomers for a little while and found the added engagement a bit too much with very little to no added benefit. However, those that are primarily shuttling or riding bike parks might benefit by going straight to the 12 degree configuration right off the bat. And speaking of those elastomers, this isn't something that you'll be swapping out trailside. I found replacing them extremely difficult as it required careful alignment of lots of small parts in order to put it back together. But towards the end of the review, Ochain actually sent me a revised version that's specifically designed to make those elastomer swaps much easier, and that definitely was the case. So what would I improve about O-Chain? Well, it'd be great if they can find a way to make it adjustable without having to sort and replace those little elastomers. Also, the steep entry price is going to be hard to swallow for a lot of people. So having it available to demo at bike shops or even offering a 30-day money-back guarantee could make a compelling reason to try one. The ideal customer for this product is somebody with a bike known to have lots of chain growth, say a single pivot suspension design. They're also focused on the descending capabilities of their bike and willing to sacrifice the weight, pedaling engagement, and over $300 to get it. Overall, O-Chain is a really unique product, and while it's not gonna be for everyone, it does what it claims, and if anything, it raises awareness for an often overlooked suspension design drawback. However, the price and accessibility are two barriers that are really going to keep this in the niche category. So there you have it. Hope you found this informative. Let us know what you think about O-Chain and whether it's a device you'd consider slapping on your own bike. In the meantime, remember, those trails don't get easier, you get better. We'll see you on the next one.